Good day everyone. Today we'll be covering experiential learning lesson 18, leading and motivating others at work. Okay, so for those of you that have um, that are with Boston, you will see that this is with regards to your last assignment that you've already submitted. So you should be quite familiar with the information. Just a few reminders, please ensure that you attend your weekly classes and then start your formative assessment too. Ensure that you check Col Campus on a regular basis. That's where we update your um, lesson prep information and obviously recordings of your um, lectures, etc. Okay, so just to recap lesson 17, we discussed the fit as a fiddle um, report. We looked at the evaluative and analysis reports. We noted the difference between a formative and evaluative reports. We discussed the structure and what is needed for an evaluative report. And then for this lesson, you need to, to prepare this podcast. All right. So the objectives for this lesson are to understand what constitutes leading and motivating, understand what motivates different individuals, and understand how to lead and motivate different individuals. So for this lesson, we'll, looking, we'll be looking at quite a lot of class discussions. Um, obviously, in class, we will discuss them in depth. So the first class discussion is, what is the difference between leadership and motivation? All right, so moving on to leading and motivating. The success of a leader is highly dependent on their ability to lead and motivate their team. The responsibility um, involves their ability to push and guide their team through change, make informed decisions, and to guide the team's energies towards achieving the collective goal. So obviously, de leading does not necessarily just mean you make the big decisions. It also means that when there is lacking motivation and morale within your team, you need to be able to learn how to motivate them and to do so um, to achieve your collective goal. Because at the end of the day, in a work environment or even at a school environment, you are there for a collective goal. All right, moving on to what does leading and motivating involve? So the first one is help team members achieve the collective and individual goal set out. So obviously your individual goal is the work that has been assigned to you within a team or the uh, work that you have assigned to a certain member in your team. The individual goals will ultimately all add up and add to the collective goal. Then be an agent for change, help and initiate change. This is all with the intention of creating positive change. This can be with regards to streamlining processes, um, removing obstacles from your team members' uh, assignments and things like that. And then the next one is motivating team members. This is important as it will have a direct influence on the success of the team. If a team isn't motivated, the likelihood of them being successful is definitely reduced. Then build team motivation, drive and spirits. All right, another class discussion is describe the type of leader that would likely get the most out of each of, um, of them in a workplace. Obviously, them implying you as the students. What type of leader would get the most work out of you? Um, what should the leader do and not do, in your opinion? And what should the, how should the leader treat him or her, etc., you as a student or you as a member? And how are you best motivated? So here you would obviously discuss, um, do you want words of encouragement? Do you like being encouraged with rewards, financial gain, etc.? And then how to lead and motivate people. Gaines and Wilson present a framework of nine stages that can be utilized to motivate and lead a team. So... Looking at another class discussion, so with every point of the framework, we'll then pause and ask the students to provide examples from the podcast where Alan Cook's displayed behavior in line with each of these key points. All right, so this is why you needed to prepare the podcast, because obviously in class, we will be stopping and discussing each point. So here are the nine um, options within the framework. Um, find what motivates people. Obviously, we will then stop to discuss where it is that you guys um, found that Alan stopped uh, motivated people um, and how did he come about finding that out. Then you'll monitor the team's skills and abilities. 
And so just for reference, obviously, monitoring the team skills and abilities does not necessarily mean micromanage. There's obviously a very fine line between the two. But by monitoring skills and abilities, you're actually ensuring that the work that you're giving to a team member, they are capable, they have the knowledge, the skills and the abilities to do so, to complete the task that it is that you're giving them. Um, if team members do not have um, the ability to do this, they themselves will lose motivation. And this could also then lead on to a knock-on effect of inequality within your team, where other members will, will then feel that because this individual has been given a task and they are unable to complete it to the, um, their best ability, why should I be doing that, um, et cetera, et cetera. So very careful to not micromanage your team by monitoring them. Um, just ensure that they can complete what it is that you are giving to them. And then this will, also this will facilitate um, training needs and things like that. So it will assist you with keeping track of that. Okay, focus on what is important. Obviously, within teams, we will. Um, there are obviously a little bit of conflict, disagreements, and arguments. But at the end of the day, you're all there for a collective goal, and it's important to bear that in mind whenever you're having a disagreement or conflict of ideas. At the end of the day, we're all there for the same thing. Um, and is this important? Sure, but there's no need for it to be anything other in a conflict of ideas. All right, so focusing on what is important. Okay, allow the team to work. So again, here I'm going to talk about micromanaging, very fine line. Once you've informed your team on what it is that they need to do or the team member, allow them to go off and work independently. Um, some people prefer that. It also shows that you trust them and that you put trust in their decisions and their abilities. Okay, this can be very much linked to expect excellence. Okay. So when you allow your team to work, you're expecting them. You expect that they know what they're doing and things like that. So that can assist with um, motivation. And it's a good way of leading, saying, you know, I trust in you and your opinion is important. And I trust that you'll make the right decision in certain aspects. Um, you do not always need to come and clear it with me or I don't need to be looking over your shoulder. So again, uh, allowing your team to work, um, monitoring the team's abilities, and expect excellence can be very closely linked to one another. Those are usually quite well um, used together in a workplace. And then praise and recognize hard work. Okay, so obviously this can then be linked to find what motivates people. Praise and recognize. Do some people want to be praised? Is that what motivates them? Do some people want to be rewarded? Um, it could be financially or verbally or, you know, being given a afternoon off or whatever the situation is I'm um, usually like at school if you won um, a class at um, you know where classes compete against one another you usually have a pizza party something like that that motivated people you know having a free lesson and getting coca-cola and pizza okay so these two are very closely linked and just in general it is important to recognize hard work but also to recognize work done in general, you know, just the natural progression of your task, of your assignment, of the team, it is good to recognize where it is that you started and how far you have come. Okay, so we've obviously discussed the expect excellence and then talking about caring people. A good leader can motivate and um, lead their team by taking a genuine interest in the well-being of their team, um, be it their work-life balance and integration, or um, with regards to the happiness in the workplace, the happiness of the assignments, how they're feeling, how their stress is being managed, etc. Then obviously respect the team. This is ex very self-explanatory. You need to ensure that you respect the team just as you would want them to respect you. And then lead by example. Um, it's very difficult for people to take advice from someone when that person themselves do not display that advice. So that's very important. You know, bear in mind, people are always watching. People are observed from a distance, etc. So if you do not behave in the manner that you are expecting them to or in the way that you preach, it will reflect negatively on you and have a negative effect on your team. Okay, another class discussion. So obviously before we stopped on each point in class and discussed them with regards to the podcast. Here's another class discussion where... How would you like to be rewarded? So here you can talk about words of affirmation, um, maybe getting time off, maybe allowing the work to host a social event. Maybe you'd like financial compensation. 
how do you work slash uh, perform at your best? So is this when you're alone at home? Do you prefer working in a team setting for your fields that you're accountable? Do you like getting out the house, maybe working at a coffee shop where you're in an environment with people, but you don't feel the need to socialize? Um, I know that there are some people who um, they struggle to not socialize when there are people around them, but they don't like being alone. So they will tend to use places like libraries or coffee shops where there are people they aren't alone but they don't socialize because they don't actually know the people okay and then how do they go about leading and motivating a large diverse organization with several different personalities and worldviews under one roof okay so how would you go about this um discuss how you would manage diversity um different people and people with different worldviews Okay, find what motivates people. So this will help to understand what drives your team and allow you to learn, lean into that when motivating and when motivation and drive is low. Assist in ensuring members perform optimally and can use the information to make positive change for the team. Okay, so we're obviously focusing now on more of the theory side of things. Here we're looking at mo monitor the team skills and abilities ensure that team members are equipped to complete the task so over here we will then talk about the inequality um, as mentioned earlier where if someone here we go if someone is um, unable to complete a task or they're unable to do so at their best due to knowledge skills or ability lacking inequality in a team can become problematic as this may influence the spirits and performance of other members who are working optimally um, leading to them to start slacking Okay, and then obviously focus on what is important. Focus on driving the team to the collective goal. Again, you're all there for a purpose. You are all there for a reason. Identify where time is being wasted and work towards reducing time wasting and distracting tasks for your team. Okay, so again, this is where you will assist them with ensuring that things are streamlined, etc. And then Allow the team to work. Okay, so this is um, where we discussed micromanaging again. There is no need to micromanage your team. This can become demoralizing and demotivating. Obviously, I don't really think anyone really enjoys having someone lean over their shoulder, especially when it is that you know what you're doing. Um, that can be quite demotivating. You feel that your leader does not trust you and that maybe there's an idea that you are incompetent in what it is that you're doing. Okay. So once the essentials have been discussed and um, issues have been clarified, you can allow the team space to work on their tasks and trust in them. Um, autonomy will be rewarded. Okay, and then moving on to praise and recognition of hard work. Okay, so again, this links to um, find out what motivates them because again, it can be, then they can then say, well, they want a bonus check or they would just like a simple thank you. Um, praising work leads to greater enthusiasm and motivation and remember to recognize progress and not just achievements. All right, and then moving on to expect excellence. Obviously, people are more likely to perform better when it is expected of them, when people feel that they have um, trust, the trust of others and things like that. It'll up their self-confidence and their motivation. So yeah, it says that motivation and excellence are directly linked. Okay. So ensuring that you expect your team members to do well. If someone is constantly expected to fail, the motivation to complete the task may be, you know, a little bit lacking. Then moving on to care about people. Open to members' ideas and opinions. The ability to take and give constructive criticism. Discuss difficult issues and questions. Have an interest in members' well-being and satisfaction. Being informed on frustrating um, issues um, the members may have and deal with them appropriately. All right, so this is obviously general care. You want people to feel welcome and accepted. You also want to ensure that your team members are coping with the work, um, whether it is they are experiencing overflow from personal life into work life or work life into personal life, etc. Okay, so taking general in, genuine interest in your team will definitely assist with motivation. They will feel comfortable enough to come to you when they are struggling. And that will ultimately contribute directly to productivity and the quality of work that's produced. 
Then respect your team. Again, treat others as you would want them to treat you. Members who do not feel respected will be demotivated and will continue um, contribute minimally to tasks. Okay, so if you feel that you do not contribute to your team, your opinion isn't respected, you as an individual are not respected, how likely is it that you would want to actually contribute positively to a team or to members that you feel do not respect you? Um, it's obviously not likely that you will want to work at your high, utmost performance. Okay, then create an environment for members to openly express themselves and ideas and have respect for members' differences and embrace diversity. So respecting one another's differences goes hand in hand with obviously how it is that you deal with conflict and the embracing of diversity and things like that. Um, uh, for obviously for me personally, I believe that if you truly have respect for your team, you also resolve issues in an appropriate manner, in an extremely respectful manner, um, being able to navigate that map. Okay, and then lead by example. Again, people are always watching, you are observed. So if you do not behave the way that you expect others to behave or the way that you preach people to behave, the likelihood of them doing that is very low. So leaders should serve as models to the team, model the behavior that they expect from their members and motivate by, uh, motivate by example. Um, ideally, when you're modeling, um, behaviors and as a team member if you have people looking up to you for guidance or anything like that you want to model healthy values such as work life balance integration respect of others general healthy living things like that okay and that concludes our lesson for our next lesson we will be discussing the meeting process we'll highlight the important aspects of attending and chairing meetings engage in group discussions or similarities and discrepancies in different views on meetings in the workplace so basically how it is that you can navigate through discrepancies and similarities during discussions of interviews for the next lesson you'll need to prepare chapter 3 pages 102 to 110 and to please watch the elon musk youtube video and jeff bezos video to please prepare those two videos and that concludes our lesson for today thank you very much